So this is our second session of the Zoom videos that I'm making. I'm Elizabeth Harding. I'm one of the community ministers for Second Unitarian Church. Today I'm going to be talking about palliative care. Palliative care is a term that people hear a lot and they don't always know what the word palliative means. So I'm going to start there. The word palliative means to make more comfortable, to take care of someone, uh, to uh, palliate, to make uh, someone's medical or health situation better. Um, and it, it often comes up with the word hospice, but I'm going to try and just focus on palliative care. So if you have a chronic medical condition or a life-limiting medical condition, you can start using palliative care before you start using hospice. Palliative care uh, often will mean that a person might be physically able and comfortable to go to their doctor's appointments. They might be able to go out uh, and see a movie. I'm thinking of pre-COVID times. Um, but they, and they might be able to be upright and moving and living comfortably at home, but they might not, but they might have this chronic or life limiting medical condition. So palliative care um, is a program that is often run concurrently with a hospice by a hospice organization. Um, and what it does is that it gives you an extra layer of care. When you sign up with a palliative care program, and this is, it is a form that you fill out. And um, so let's say you are, and your doctor are talking and you have a chronic medical condition or a life limiting medical condition. And he suggests that it might be time to not seek out active medical treatment for your condition. He says, what if we, what if we, did one step down? Or what if she said, what if we moved one step down with your medical care? Um, and that would be palliative care. You would still be able to see your regular doctor. You would still be able to live your life the way you wanted to. But you would have access to a team that could come to your home and help you monitor that chronic medical condition or that life-limiting medical condition rather than having to go to the doctor's office all the time. So when you choose to work with a palliative care program, what you would receive is staff. You would have a nurse coming to visit you once a month or at a time of your choosing. They would take your vitals. They would make sure that your medications are in order. They might order you new medications or put them in the pill box. They may talk to you about the side effects of your medications. They might help you figure out how to manage your pain. And that is a big part about palliative care, that the nurse helps you manage your pain comfortably from your own home. You are also able to work with a social worker. That's the second person. The social worker might come once a month. Um, they might talk to you about eventually making plans to move into a facility that will help you manage your chronic or life-limiting condition. They might help you talk with your family about what your medical needs are and what your wishes are. Um, you would also have access to the hospice physicians that are on call through the hospice program. So you wouldn't necessarily talk to them all the time. But let's say you have a question and you know your nurse is coming the next day. So you write down your question and when your palliative care nurse comes, you say, hey, I have this question about my medical condition. Can we call the doctor? And because the hospice doctor knows about chronic medical conditions and life limiting medical conditions, you might get an answer that is more in depth and more able to help you live your life the way you want to live. So this is a really great program. Most hospices have a palliative care uh, program with in conjunction with the hospice team. The other great thing about having palliative care before you have hospice is that you get to know people through the hospice program. Several palliative care programs in our area are nine to five Monday through Friday, but the people who are on call 24 hours a day are part of the hospice team. 
And so you'd be able to get to know these other people and ask questions when the palliative care team program team is not available to you. <clears throat> other things that the palliative care team can do, um, they can help you treat ongoing symptoms of your chronic medical condition like nausea, depression, and anxiety. They can clarify your goals, help you figure out what they are, help you make decisions about your illness. They can coordinate with all of the specialists that you work with. They can help you stay comfortable and as active as possible. They can facilitate emotional, social, and spiritual support. They can address daily living challenges because you're there. They're no, they, they see your home and they know what challenges you might hear. Um, they can help you develop a comprehensive care plan so that in the future you know what you want to do. Uh, palliative care can be provided in any setting. It can be in your home. It can be in a nursing home. It can be in a retirement community. It can be in a clinic. A lot of hospices have a separate uh, office for their palliative care patients where they can come in and be seen if they would prefer that. So how does this all get paid for? This is always the question I get asked. This sounds great, but how does it get paid for? So many people, when they turn 65, they sign up for Medicare A and Medicare B. And hospice, uh, I mean, palliative care is covered under Medicare B. Many other private insurances often have a provision now for palliative and hospice care. They know that people under 65 also have life limiting or chronic conditions. So that is another way that it is paid for. If you are struggling financially or not able uh, to have that kind of insurance, many palliative care programs and hospice programs have uh, funds that they allocate to people in need. So because of their strong social consciences, uh, hospices and palliative care programs uh, will often help people who do not have any able ability to pay. They, they rarely turn away people. I worked for two hospices and they, they both one was private and one was a non-for-profit and both of them had funds for people who were in need. Um, so as much as it is very hard work to advocate for yourself if you are struggling financially, please do. Um, there are a lot of people who would love to help you and figure out what is the, the next thing that you need to do. So let me reiterate, palliative care is for people who have a chronic condition, a chronic medical condition or a life-limiting medical condition. And they are not, they, they need an extra layer of care to have help at home. And that is what palliative care is. It is care that is focused on uh, maintaining your daily dignity and comfort, addressing your pain needs, and keeping you active and as independent as possible. Um, the staff that you would receive covered by Medicare B is a, a social worker and a nurse and access to the hospice's doctor. Um, it looks like because this is, because hospice and palliative care are so intertwined, uh, this particular video is going to be shorter. Um, how does, how does you, how do you find, how do you sign up for palliative care? So let's say you go to your doctor and you and your doctor agree that palliative care would be the, the best avenue for yourself. Um, the next step is for the doctor to write an order. So it gets put into the electronic medical system that says that this patient is interested in a palliative care consultation. So what would happen is that you would choose which hospice that you wanted to use, which organization that provides palliative care. Many hospitals have a palliative care program. Uh, many hospices also have a palliative care program. So you can go on your doctor's recommendation, excuse me, or you can ask around um, with friends and family. Um, Journey Care is still operating in the area. There's one in Barrington and there's also a Midwest Care Center in Glenview. Um, North Shore Hospital has a palliative care program. Um, the 
uh, private hospices like Seasons and Unity Hospice also have palliative care programs. So what they would do is once you gave them a once you gave them a phone call, they would have a nurse come out to your home and they would uh, figure out whether or not it was the best choice uh, for you to sign up with the palliative care program. And they would take walk you through all the forms, and they would take your vitals. They would look at all your medications. They would talk to you about the doctor's order, which they had received through the computer or the fax. Um, hospices still use fax um, and then they would you would decide if you wanted to sign up then you would fill out the forms something that is important to know is that you can always change your mind if you are on palliative care for three months and your doctor calls you up and says hey I found out about this amazing new treatment for your chronic condition or your life limiting medical condition would you like to try it would you like to be part of a clinical study you can call the hospice or the palliative care program and say, you know what, I've decided to seek active treatment. And they will come out and have you sign the forms that they call revocation forms, and you will no longer be a palliative care patient. And you can go and be a part of your clinical study or start uh, your kind of, your more active medical um, treatment. So you have lots of choices about what you want to do. Um, palliative care is sort of a larger umbrella. If you think about palliative care and hospice care, palliative care is the big umbrella. Um, hospice is sort of the stick that holds it up. Um, it is an amazing program. We've had lots of people graduate from palliative care and never use hospice. And we've had lots of people uh, whose medical conditions got worse and they decided to switch over to hospice. And again, it's a simple situation of the doctor writing an order, and then you uh, have a consultation with the nurse uh, from the team, and then uh, you sign some paperwork, and then services begin. So once you sign up for palliative care, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a phone call from the nurse and a phone call from the social worker, and they're gonna wanna set up some appointments um, to meet you at your home and get to know your family. So whoever is helping you in your journey, whether it be a friend or a family member or a chosen family member, um, they will wanna know if you have pets in the home, they will wanna know when they can come and visit you. The first appointment can take a long time. It can be like up to an hour and a half, depending on all the different things that you might wanna talk about. Um, the, at that appointment, like I said, they'll take some medical information, they'll go over your meds, um, and they'll help you figure out what are your goals with palliative care. So it's a really amazing service. Um, and the fact that it's part of Medicare Part B is really terrific. And the, part, the fact that more private insurances are getting their act together and being a part of it is also really terrific. Um, again, if you have questions about your medical situation, um, that are private and you don't want to ask at the Q&A sessions, I'm really glad to talk with you over the phone or set up a Zoom meeting or a phone call and helping help you figure out what is the next step. Um, it's, it's an important thing to live your life with dignity and have the help that you need to do that.